who was behind this menacing campaign. All the suspicion fell on a rather shadowy new organization called Midyad Amdefin Khamri, or the Movement for the Defense of Wales. To be absolutely honest, the police were clueless. And they were clueless for a good reason because the mastermind behind the campaign didn't fit any of the traditional stereotypes of what we might call a traditional Welsh extremist. John Jenkins had been raised in industrial South Wales. He wasn't a Welsh speaker. He'd become disillusioned with democratic politics and was convinced that more violent means were justified. At the time of the investiture, he was a serving officer in the British Army. And did you hate the royal family? No, of course not. I hated what they represented. Being in the army, in many ways, was a cover, but it's also a learning experience. I saw what the empire was all about. I realised that you don't have an empire if you're nice people. <clears throat> you certainly don't keep it if you're nice people. I felt that our nation was being discredited and disowned and I felt that something had to be done about it. Many people felt something had to be done about it, but no one was doing anything about it. So I realized in the end that unless I did it, nobody would do it. People will say forcefully that there are no circumstances in which you can excuse violence. It is not a legitimate approach. Well, it's a very effective, illegitimate way of going about it. Now, what can I tell you about Midyad Amvifin Khamri, or MAC for short? Well, it had existed for quite a while before John Jenkins joined it, but he was the one who whipped it into shape and became its dominant figure. And here's an intriguing thing. He invented a kind of cell structure. He had little teams of two or three men dotted throughout Wales, and none of these teams knew the membership of the other cells. They didn't even know Jenkins' name. And if all of that sounds quite familiar, there's a good reason. Because that's the structure later adopted by the provisional IRA. And what about John Jenkins? What did he do? Well, he was the bomb maker. He delivered the bombs to the cell leaders, and then they went out and planted them. This was an attempt to disrupt the situation, and thereby to heighten the political awareness of the people of Wales. But if it's life-threatening, it's not just the protest, is it? No, but what, what we're thinking of is um, the mass media and communication. And as the mass media was taking the approved line, there was only one way to take another line, and that was to be a bit dramatic. And I can't think of anything much more dramatic than bombs. Not surprisingly, the bombing incidents caused acute concern here in Downing Street. And Harold Wilson, the Prime Minister, even considered cancelling the entire investiture. But he was persuaded to carry on with the plans. And among those doing the persuading, none was more fervent than the Secretary of State for Wales, George Thomas. And then Wilson considered sending extra troops to Carnarvon just in case. But that didn't happen either because the Secretary of State for Defence, Dennis Healy, thought it might look like some kind of invading force. During investiture week, John Jenkins, the most wanted man in Wales, was stationed in a specially built camp just outside Carnarvon. He was on duty as a sergeant in the Army Medical Services. It was here that Jenkins learned that his bombing campaign, supposedly designed to harm nobody, had claimed two lives those of his own men. I was in my tent and the flap opened and uh, an officer poked his head in and said, oh, we got, three of the, we got two of the bastards last night. And of course I had to look delighted, which is the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. My regret was that other people had died and not me. Why did you put the bomb at Llandidno Pier? It was meant to stop him coming ashore. It was meant to get rid of the pier so that the, the ship couldn't dock and he couldn't get off. So it was meant to go off before the ship came up? Oh, yes, of course, yes. They never found that bomb? No. And in fact, they, they tried to deny that there was ever a bomb there. 
Well, they had to say that because if they had been and the Prince had got off and disembarked and walked on the pier, he would have been in grave danger. John Jenkins was arrested and in April 1970, he was sentenced to 10 years in prison. John Jenkins was finally caught off by an informant. He then pleaded guilty to eight charges involving explosives. With his imprisonment, the bombing campaign in Wales came to an end. So when people say to you, is this a campaign you regret, your answer is still no. Yeah. Despite the fact that you're upset about the loss of those two men. Yeah, yeah. Certain things have to be done because not doing them causes more damage and problems than doing them.